Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, your one-stop shop for mature dialogue. We're going to get right to it. Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, your one-stop shop for mature sports dialogue. I'm your host, Earl Tima, alongside my co-host, my big uncle, Alan Tima. Before we go any further, please like the video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Once again, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, that way you know Dream Team is out there when we upload new content. All right, we getting right to it. The Eastern Conference Playoffs. Oh, yeah. Listen up, man. I slept on it. I know it's the first round. Typically, the first round is very boring, but uh, it's been very exciting, man. As of today, Saturday, we'll start here. The Miami Heat. Oh, that, that, well, you know, that was the real, that was a surprise because I was a big, I was big on Miami. Yes, you were. Beating the Bucks. We were, we both were across the, throughout the season. Yeah. Actually, throughout the season, but no, in our last episode, yeah. you had... The Bucks winning in uh, five or six. I can't remember. Something after. like that. Yeah. I didn't. I really didn't see a sweep coming, and I really thought that the that Miami Heat had the number of them. But you and our special guest Cedric Ward. Who, Say what up? Yeah. I, I mean, I wish Ced was here today with us today, but he's out visiting family out in South Carolina. Yes, sir. And uh, but you you and Ced had. The Bucks in five or six, mm-hmm. I believe. I had Miami, Miami in about five or six or something yeah. like that. But I never thought that they would sweep Miami. Miami, I don't know what happened as far as Miami's concerned, but we Jimmy, know what happened though. Jimmy Butler did not show up, man. It, it, it was first of all, if you look at the rosters, man, a lot of people. Drew Holiday isn't a perennial All Star, although he should be. Yeah. If you watch games, you know the difference that he makes on the floor. It yeah. doesn't always show up in the box score, but they were just a more talented team. I didn't think that though. That was the thing. I mean, I know. Listen, don't um, Drew Holiday. I know what he's capable of. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't get that twisted. But I just didn't think that. A sweep? Not see. That's the difference. It, it's not so much losing. It, it, it's how they lost. And yeah, Jimmy never looked like himself. And if you, if we're really being honest with ourselves and the Miami Heat fans out there, mm-hmm. it's been an uphill climb the entire season. And with a team yeah. that's constructed that way, you can't really turn it off and turn it on because you don't have the star power that other teams may have. Like right. the it's LA. a different type of star power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they don't have, like, um, top five players on the team. So, mm-hmm. Jimmy, you know what? It was hard this time around because of the matchup. Can't go off last year because it was a different team. And also, you weren't really sneaking up on anyone. And, and it wasn't and, even, I don't even think it was about sneaking up mm-hmm. because, you know, last year was different. The bubble... There was no fans, and it's different. I think those pl- the pressure of the fans mm-hmm. was not on a, a lot of players in last year. And, I mean, uh, of course, I'm a Laker fan. Yeah. We, we know that. But um, I'm an NBA fan first. And a lot of people say, you know, they try to take away from the Lakers championship because of the bubble. And... I can understand it now, a little, just a little bit now. Well, all right, I'm gonna let you finish your point because I'm gonna be devil's advocate because I have another uh, point to because counteract that. you know a lot of plays like because when, when I look at the 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 Miami Heat like, who we're talking about, I look at some of their players and the way they played in the bubble and compared to where they played now is it's it's night and day. You know. Yeah, yeah, but also. If that's the case, because I know where you're going with it, mm-hmm. why weren't they consistent throughout the whole year? But it was, it was, it was, it was bad the yeah. whole year. Yeah, I mean, even even down to Jimmy, Jimmy Butler been in and out the lineup and all that, and um, he would have a good game and then come back and 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 talk about how the the team just. He don't understand how the team is not doing this and how not doing that, and they need to stop and they need to attack the basket and stop pulling up for short jump shots and all that. But I watched him all during the playoffs do the same thing that he claimed that he, you know, 
claimed that they were all doing. Um, yeah. and although he never really put it on the team, it always come off as the other part of the Like the a subliminal message. Yeah. Yeah. But Jimmy did not step up as the leader that they looking that they were looking for. But you know what too? Cause we if you go back to our past episodes, Dream Team is out there. We've spoke about the Bucks and we critiqued them throughout the whole year. Not the Bucks, we critiqued Bud, who's the coach, and Giannis, right? Yeah. And we would talk about how his limitations hurt the team. Mm-hmm. But you also spoke about them having playmakers, playmakers or lack thereof. Yeah. And that was the difference in the series because although you could key in on Giannis, mm-hmm. Drew and Middleton were setting them up. And yeah. Giannis was not bringing the ball up as much. He, he was just it's picking exactly his- what we explained yeah. in that episode. Mm-hmm. I was I, I was screaming playmakers. They need that, you know playmakers and Jim and Holiday is a playmaker. And and if you watch this series, how your uh, how, how 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 Giannis got his his um his points and how he was affecting the game. It wasn't more of him dominating the ball and going downhill. It was more of other players going downhill, setting up different plays and giving him the ball from foul line in and, and he didn't have to he didn't have to create for himself. So it makes you shine a different type of light on what Boston can I mean on what Milwaukee can actually do. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. They they definitely play within themselves. Now, last thing on Miami, I think the hesitancy of Bam and because Jimmy Butler didn't take a lot of shots that were wide open as well. Yeah. And so he he just didn't look like himself. It seemed as though he was a little tired out there. They just didn't have the workhorses. Tyler Hero never showed up. He didn't show up. He couldn't knock down shots. Duncan Robinson had Game one is a very effective game for him. But outside of that, we, we spoke about this again. I hate the sound as if with some psychics out here or something, but we do watch the games. Miami is a threshold. Mm-hmm. They can only score a certain amount of points. Right. And if they can't stop you from reaching probably 105 to 110, it's rare that they're going to win those games. Right. And if Jimmy is not bubble Jimmy, and if Tyler Harrow isn't showing flashes of who Pat Riley or front office seems to think he can be, no. or Bam isn't playing like an all star, no it way. shows. And it, that that didn't happen this series at all, man. Bam didn't Game show one, up. Game one, it was a flash. That's it. Yeah. After that, it was over. Bam didn't show up. Jimmy didn't show up. Not as the stars that need that they needed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand that they they changed the lineup and. And Drogic came off the bench and all that. But none of those other players sh- stepped up to be the player that that's needed in this series. Kendrick Nunn was balling, though. Kendrick, today, yeah, 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 yeah. he balled. But as a full en- entire series, oh, no. Yeah. You can't show up in, in the last game of the I mean, what, what, elimination series, and now you still the only one that's showing up. Yeah, but you. What, I mean, I want to see the dude that show up for. I mean, it was four games. Yeah, we, I I want to see you show up for four games. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm really that, hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and disappointed in the simple fact that because I had Miami coming out of the East. Mm-hmm. That changed my whole sus- perspective of the Eastern Conference now. Yeah, because. What I expected from Miami is what I saw last year from them in the bubble. Yeah, they, they kind of like bust your bubble. Right? Fans like, changed a whole lot because the fans makes a lot of noise, put a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, but like even then, because when you think about the bubble, right, because people like to say how there's no fans, but there were other different circumstances. Mm-hmm. We're talking about affluent individuals who, you know, they have long money, they used to living in certain hotels, a different type of lifestyle. They had to adjust to that as well. So although there weren't no fans in the bubble, people had to stay in a centralized location. So that was another hurdle too. Yeah, but that's more of affection of now I can I can have that one on one approach with my teammates. But what does that speak of? We we talk about this a lot off air. It applies to life, right? Discipline. 
Yeah, it, it, but it, I think that the bubble made discipline priority. And it was whether you wanted it or not, it was there because you had nothing else but teammates. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't have families. You didn't have the nightclubs. You didn't have the different problems that, that come across, uh, distractions that can actually come across. They didn't have those because they was in a one location and mm -hmm. it was only one thing only. Get prepared for your next game. Yeah. Because it was, I mean, how many times can you ride on a, 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 a roller coaster on Disney? Now, I, I dig that. So, you know what I'm saying? So th there's pros and cons, right? Because right. if you look, a lot of players that played in the pro in the bubble last year that sh had great shooting percentages, they're struggling right now. Yeah. And whether what team, from, from the Lakers who won a championship on down, there's guys who have great bubble Well, well shows, I, but 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 come when it come down to now, they they're not showing up. So the question to you is like, you, you, because I agree with some of that sentiment that a lot of cats showed out and looked like uh, otherworldly players in the bubble. Is that because? Is it because the environment, or is it or is it because their lack of production is because of the bubble and the residue it left behind, the turnaround time. Because if you look at certain teams, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, like because Milwaukee, uh, because because Milwaukee went home r relatively early mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Yeah, and Miami was late. They they was in the finals, and even their key pickups, Milwaukee, they didn't make the playoffs. Right, Drew was home early. He never made. Remember, they tried to set it up for the Pelicans to make the the AFC, but right. they they didn't make it. No. So, but at the end of the day, this is just me speaking. You know what I'm saying? This is team sports, but based on my opinion, I can only speak for myself. Milwaukee was just a better team, man. Yeah. I believe they was the better team last year. I just don't, don't think that that I just think they got caught up. Giannis ain't have the heart. He 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 No, last year was a different team. He didn't have the same makeup. Oh, the playmakers. He didn't have That's the valid. playmakers. That is valid, and if you brother. go back to the beginning of the season when uh, uh, with 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 the Eastern Conference that we talked about in that episode, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about how Giannis need playmakers that's going to get him the ball in positions where it doesn't, it's not that difficult for him. And that's exactly what happened in this series. So maybe it's not about the bubble. Maybe it's not about all the other things that we just mentioned. But maybe it's just about Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks Getting the pieces they they need, a la Drew, Drew Holiday, Holiday, the kid from San Antonio that came from San Antonio, Forbes, D Forbes, come on, I mean, Brick Lopez getting some inside buckets. They yeah, just switched it up a lot. They switched man. it up a lot because like um, not not the game today, but game three, Sh game three. Well, two and three were dominant. He. Lopez in the, and down in the box was ridiculous. And we're talking about Miami and the Bucks, you know, and that series is over. But there's so many other teams in the East that we need to be worried about because that is over with already. No doubt. So let's transition. So we'll, all right, so we'll, maybe we'll talk about one and eight, right? So we have Philly and. Washington. As we speak right now, Washington, excuse me, Philly is up by about eight points at the end of the first quarter. They're up 2-0 in the series. They're just a better team. Yeah. From it, 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 You just see the difference. They just can't, yeah, it's like. Too much size. Yeah. Better coaching. Too high much. IQs on, on the roster. Yeah. More playoff experience. Westbrook is is pretty much broken breaking down. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, not breaking down like he's he can't deal through the playoffs, but he's dealing with injuries, uh, possible um, ankle injury mm -hmm. where it's possible he might not even play today. But he he is playing, you know. And then a lot of cats haven't been there, right? And then on they, uh, that's a young team. And another thing is that. And they don't have size at all. At all. And, and you're uh, dealing with Embiid. 
who is a unicorn pretty much in this league in yeah. day and time. And Washington, kind of like Miami, I think is a familiar theme, although although they didn't make the playoffs last year. A lot of these teams have been playing playoff style basketball for the last month or so just to get in position just to so, get in position for that so now yeah. they're hitting brick walls yeah. you know what i mean exactly and also because they're doing that with young players on that team you got like okay we got bill and we got westbrook mm -hmm. but the rest of them dudes are all young yeah and they don't any, even understand this level of play that it takes to be successful in the playoff and it, it's just a bad matchup but with that being said because when we started the show, we said we were excited about like the Eastern Conference or the playoffs as a whole. It's one thing about Na um, Westbrook, right? He brings across or brings about narratives that are just... It's unique because even when his team is losing, you still find yourself waiting to tune in because... He never gives up. It's something to be said about that, man. Never giving up. That's exactly why we did the episode on the mis uh, wise. Westbrook misunderstood mm -hmm. because he's always going to give you that 100% on that's, the floor. That's real. He's always giving you the effort that it takes to to try to win games. And, I mean, he gets the label of a loser, mm -hmm. don't know how to win games and all that, but I, don't, I, I just don't agree with that. It's just that he's in a position where he can't succeed. Yeah. And most people would say it's his fault, right? But at the end of the day, wherever he goes, he plays hard. And they just so happen to be playing against a team, like we stated, went down the facts, yeah. who are much bigger, better coach, better overall roster. And Doc Rivers, Joel Embiid. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Danny Green. Dan, um, <laughs> like, we're we talking about winners. Yeah. And, and uh, we're not talking Embiid. And, we're not talking about superstars, yeah. but we're talking about dudes have, who have a resume of winning in this league. And, uh, and, and, and I know that sounds strange when we mention that dudes have a resume of, of winning in this league mm -hmm. when you start talking about Embiid. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, not Embiid. Yeah, Embiid and Simmons. I know they're not, but they got a hall. They got a, to me a Hall of Fame coach, yes. and Doc Rivers, and Danny Green, who may I'm not saying he's Hall of Fame because he's nowhere near being Hall of Fame, but Danny Green is a winner. Yeah, you know, and, and you get a coach like Doc Rivers with a Danny Green, going along with the talent of MB and Simmons, then you got a. Steph Curry, little brother over there, who shoot a better percentage than he does. Uh, I mean, and, and Seth. Not only that, Tobias. Thank you. Yeah. Tobias is having a great season. He's having an even better postseason. Mm. And, and and I mean, enough is enough. And they, are, they added George Hill. Don't go by box scores. We're talking about experience. There's no, and they're playing wanna, against Washington. Yeah. Who've so. been dealing with injuries and and, and and COVID and all that stuff all season long. And uh, although they the fight and the heart and determination that Westbrook brings to teams, mm -hmm. it's just not enough. Well, you, you said a handful there. So pretty much we can move on. Yeah, we do have well, they 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 were down as we finished watching the first quarter. Three nothing. By the time we, we come out with another episode, three nothing. Washington Philly. may be home. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe home. So we'll move on from that. Yeah. All right. So we got Miami's home, Washington's home. Well, well we don't got them home. Not, but not, that, that was. Let me they're on their that. way. They they're down in the series. Yeah. That's the first and eighth. Second and seventh will happen to be Brooklyn and Boston. I had Boston winning about one or two games. I don't see them, especially without but without um uh, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, and I mean. Maybe after game three, mm -hmm. I would think if Jalen Brown was there, this would be totally different. Yeah, but you know what's funny about that? Mm -hmm. Brooklyn. Because when we spoke about, when we had our uh, our um, guest here say, we were talking about how you don't want, if you're Brooklyn, mm -hmm. you didn't want to face Washington in the first, half, well, the first round because it could be very brutal and, you know, it's a lot... Yeah. A lot of banging and things of that nature with injuries, players who aren't 100%. Right. The longer you allow this to proceed while Milwaukee is sitting at home mm -hmm. watching, putting the scouting report together, 
you might want to get this over as soon as possible. And I think Brooklyn, excuse me, Boston has one more game in them. I think they could probably win two out of. Yeah, that's that's the thing about it. Because, you know, uh, in, in game uh, three, Tatum, Tatum, he, he, he scored 50 points. Yeah, man. His supporting cast, I mean, Tristan Thompson had a monster game. Yes, yeah, sir. Monster. I think it was like 19 and 17 or something like that. He Not had, to mention he's undersized. So if he, he's doing that against Brooklyn. And, can you imagine yeah. what other teams? I mean, listen. But that, first of all, when you come to Brooklyn, for the first time in 59 years, you have two players that scored 39 and 41 and lose the game. Yeah. yeah. Two players on the same team. Yeah. But this goes back to what the their Achilles Hill was. No before. defense. Yeah, so that's that's part of the issue. Now we're not stating saying that Boston will beat them, but if you're watching the game, you don't want to prolong this series longer than it has to be because you're dealing with fragile players on if, that roster. If Brooklyn was what everyone expect and think and say that they are this was supposed to be a sweep. Yeah, especially without Jalen Brown. Kevin Durant matched up against Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum should not come out of that game with 50 points. Nah. And his second wingman, which would be being that Jalen Brown is not there, which would be Kimba mm-hmm. having six points, and they win that game. Doesn't make sense. No, that tells me that you cannot win in what we always knew without no defense. Now, not in the playoffs, man. And it's 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 kind of iffy. Like, is you you will have Brooklyn win the series, but where is Jordan? DeAndre Jordan? Yeah, where is he? That's a mystery because I don't understand. When we think about the Jared Allen situation, how he, it was a whole big thing about him starting over DeAndre, and DeAndre got the start. Now he's gone. Now Jordan isn't playing. Claxton getting the minutes. Is he hurt? I don't, I, no. He, I remember a game during the regular season where he fell and hurt his wrist, and I really haven't seen him since then. It's the playoffs, man. I know, but is he hurt? Is, the question is, I, would I he make a difference? I kind of believe that he... I would take Claxton over him at this point. Claxton is a baller. I like him, man. Uh, he's definitely a baller, but I don't see putting a veteran like Jordan on the bench behind it. Especially when you got somebody like Tristan Thompson getting 17 and 19. Because in their minds, they feel like they're gonna outscore you anyway. That can ha- I mean, but you, you can't said, do yeah, that yeah, with yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. That's not. That's my point. But that's the Dan Tony train of thought. And Steve yeah. Nash is from that culture, so that's you could do think. that if if Kevin Durant has the mindset defensively that he had when he was in, in Golden, Golden State. State. Because what I've seen is they don't think they need to play defense. Mm. They think that they can outsc- outscore everybody. Yeah. So and that's and. That, you know how hard that is for three superstars to score a lot of points? It's only enough room for two. That's why That's why Kyrie struggled in yeah. that game. Right? But you've been preaching that the whole year. So yeah. other teams are seeing it too. So now the longer they allow this series to go on, if it does, because Boston is down 2-1, right? Right. You're just setting a blueprint or a narrative or even giving other teams some sort of indication on how to play them. Yeah. They have to be dominant from this fourth point on. Yeah. Because even the first game, they let them stick around in the first half. Yeah. If Boston – it's a bunch of ifs. Ifs don't matter in the league, but if Jalen Brown was – Tatum got hurt too also. Tatum yeah. left that game early. Yeah. He got poked in the eye and left that game early. Mm. And he came back with a vengeance in yeah. game three. Yeah. And you would think that KD could put a stop to it. He he and it to me it looked like he didn't want no parts cuz some of those switches didn't need to be switches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He it's like, "Okay, Kyrie, you do it because I don't <laughs> want him to embarrass me." Yeah. 
And that's what was and he see he left Kyrie, who's not known as a defender, out there to drop the guard Tatum. And this dude, he ended up with 50. So when he had 35, you never thought let let let's not make the switch. Well, listen, man, this is where championship pedigree comes into play, right? And this is why a lot of people get on Durant, because although he has the rings, did he did he is there any sense of of, I would say, because we, we, we call it what? Retaining information, right? So mm-hmm. you, we, you learn something, now you apply it later on down the road. He should be able to carry that over. Now he's a leader on this team, right? This is his... Leader? He's, he's not a leader. Well, listen, period. Maybe that's the problem then. Because if they allow these cats to stick around, they go six games. Because I'm going to tell you, if Kemba get hot at the same time when, want- when when when... Um, Tatum Tatum is having a, just a decent game of what he's capable of because that was a superstar game for 50. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had a great, great, great game to drop 50 when his number two guy only got six. No. And 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 then Tristan Thompson is the one with 17 and 19. So if he can get Kimba going, they can make a series out of this. They can, man. And it goes back to what championship pedigree, right? Yeah. We spoke about this the last two series we spoke on. Tristan Thompson is a champion, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, he is. So that's the second and seventh seed. We went over what the three and six was the Bucks in Miami. Mm-hmm. Right. So the last one would be the New York Knickerbockers Woo! and the Atlanta Hawks. I took the Hawks in six games I'm after the debate. The Knicks. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I have a question. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man. <laughs> you seen Julius Randle? I'm not worried about it. Because for some reason, I got a funny feeling that Julius Randle is going to find his shot before this season. I mean, he cannot keep continue missing the shots he's missing. And I'm watching how he's – it's the same shots he took during the season. The difference is it's not single coverage. It's double coverage. And he's getting the same shots that he would normally hit – that he has been hitting all season that got him the the – the um play of the not the play of the year most but the most improved play of the year okay but when you when you look at it if he continued to be on attack like he was during the season like in game two mm-hmm. right they lost game one mm-hmm. they won game two You're down by 12 and they came right. back in third but that was in the second half Randall shots wasn't falling but he was able to get to the basket and draw the defense and create shots for players like Barrett, players like um, Bullock. Bullock. Oh, uh, D. I Rose mean, is balling well, out of his Well, D. Rose mind. is already balling. He didn't need people to set up for him because D. Rose set the tone for that. Alex Burke. Uh, Alex Burke. Burke. Right. All of these. This, Randall creates shots for these guys. And I watched in the second half of game two how he wasn't making shots, but he was still attacking the basket. And when he drew, he was able to dish out for easy buckets for those guys. And that's how they got that victory. Yeah. But my my thing is with that, and we spoke about this roughly about a week and a half ago. Y'all can go back and check out our um, the preview of the Eastern Conference playoffs. My thing is the Knicks offensively are just like any other Tibbs team. Yeah. They're very predictable. Let's go back to game one. One possession game. They need to tie the game at the end of regulation. That mm-hmm. was OT, right? Yeah. You see what Tibbs threw, drew up? That was horrendous. Yeah. Just throw the ball to Randall and hopefully he can get a shot off. Right. I think Tibbs is limited offensively. But defensively, but, he's great. And that's the thing. But when yeah. you're dealing with dynamic players like Trey Young, mm-hmm. you can't stop players like that. Dudes like... Lou Will, who come off the bench, Bogdanovich. They have scores on the team. And also I'm glad you mentioned Bogdanovich yeah, because people don't really understand. I mean, well, listen, I'm he's I, on the scene right now. He had never been on the scene. I'm gonna be honest. Uh-huh. Cause you had to lecture me on him. Cause I, I was like, he, he's nice, but he he he's everything you spoke of and yeah, more. He's he big is. shots. But Let's also give credit to Atlanta's defense because I spoke on Nick McMillan. I never thought that they was going to be capable of doing that. I mean, it's Collins, easy to do that against a defense. Capella, de- they're yeah. giving Randall headaches, man. It's not just missed shots. Not just Collins. Um, Capella's there. Gallinari. Because it's the size. They got the length. Yeah. Oh. 
it's given it's given it's given um Randall problems. It is. And I didn't see that coming. Yeah. But now that I mean, I can see it now because it's happening right before my eyes. Mm -hmm. But before this series started, I didn't see that. And I mean, I just got finished watching um Julius Randall destroy mm -hmm. destroy Anthony Davis. Yeah. He and I, there's no way if he can do this to Anthony Davis, but the the shout outs to Atlanta coach Nate McMillan. Nate McMillan, I understand it, and I, from a, from my point of understanding, he Atlanta still haven't given him an offer sheet for next year, or even talking about a a deal for him next year when. He's, it's a no-brainer. Well, it's a no-brainer. He's definitely coming back. It, it's just I a, don't know. Nah, I don't see that. As if he wants it. But at the same time, I, I think what really set this series apart, because mm -hmm. we talk about the most improved players and Rand listen, let me preface my comments. Randall's a baller. Like we we've seen the maturation process of him, right? Yeah. I think the issue most is most improved player. Yes. Mm -hmm. An all-star. And, and it should have been an MVP, MVP votes, conversation. Yeah, yeah. Based on now, I'm not saying win it, but he should be in the conversation. Yeah. I think the problem is in the playoffs, a lot of fans out there, they seem to think that this is an NCAA format. No, when you're playing a professional team in mm -hmm. a seven-game series, there right. are adjustments. They see things night in and night out. What you did in game one, you may not necessarily be able to get away with game three and game four. Right. I don't think that he has seen enough to be able to make the adjustments on the fly. And Tibbs doesn't really present that. Because D. Rose, is nothing really changed with the coverage on D. Rose, right? No, right. But he's still getting off. Why? Because he has the experience to understand. But at the same time, they fit that. you got to understand, Atlanta is understanding that we will live with D. Rose doing what he's doing. Mm. That's a and great point. And we'll continue covering him straight up. And we're not trying to stop him from getting to the basket and doing the things he do. But we want to just contain Julius Randle. That's because a great he point. makes the difference of them being a winner or a loser. And you know what else confirms what you're saying? What? Game one. Yeah. Alec Burke had the game of his life. Yes, he did. And the Knicks didn't pull it off. Mm -hmm. That those type of games come back and burn you, but it was probably uh, probably Atlanta's strategy. Like, you just can't let Julius Randle just go off. Julius Randle been the focal point of the Knicks' success all year, and the problem is, and the reason why I don't think it's so much of them being. We talked about this earlier, and I and 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 I, I agreed along with you as concerning like the Knicks uh, Atlanta being up Randle. I don't see that because I see him missing the same shots that I watched him make all season long. But you know what's you know what's funny about that, right. and that's a valid point also. Mm -hmm. But I think it comes down to adjustments as well, right? Because if you look, they're making the game harder than it has to be. He never. Let's go back to the Giannis situation. Mm -hmm. He's never within twelve to ten feet of the basket. Everything is perimeter. He's stronger than anyone on probably Atlanta. He's not. Just face him up. Wait, let me correct you on that. During the season, he looked like he was stronger and just a beast and bump you mm -hmm. and knock you off 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 a off a balance and for for and pulling up for a mid range shot between 15 feet from the basket or whatever, and then occasionally threes. The problem is he's getting those same shots. He's just not making them. But what did he do in game two? Attack mode. At he, least he tried to get to the free throw attack line. Attack mode. He still wasn't knocking down shots, but mm -hmm. he was creating shots for others. He made a few shots, mm -hmm. but not at the percentage rate that he made during the season. Yeah. I mean. I, well, it's the playoffs, baby. It's the playoffs. It's a whole different game. And he haven't, I mean, he haven't stepped up to be that be what they need him to be and I just can't see him um, continuing to miss those shots and I still got the Knicks although I know we we made sad my man who was here on a, I miss him was here in South Carolina visiting family I wish he was here today with us but I know you and him both had Atlanta and to six. win that series in six but I believe no he had the Knicks I had the Atlanta in six no both y'all had no, he had the Knicks Oh yeah, he did have he Knicks, did right? Six and six or seven. That was what I said. Yeah. I can't remember what said said six or seven, but I still believe that the Knicks can pull us off in seven. And the reason why I say that is because I can't see Randall missing the shots that I watched him make 
all season long every game of this series. Well, I'm, my biggest takeaway is this, right? They're down 2-1. Mm-hmm. Last night's game was they, they just seemed as though they was an inferior team. They just going to make a basket. basket. Their but, defense was all right. You can't, you can't do nothing. But Trey yo, was perfect. But Trey, but even with that, Trey hasn't had a, a monster Trey game yet. No, no, no. He, he hit had big halves. buckets. Yeah. He had halves and all that. Yeah, but not a game, a full game. Because no. if you even Nate, sometimes if you look at game two when they were up by twelve, he sat him too he long. He sat him too long. That's how they lost that you game. You could be down three up. Three no. Yeah. yeah so, with that being said, the Knicks, Randall has to step up. I think that RJ Barrett needs to attack more. Just, just too many they're too perimeter, man. Yeah. They're too perimeter. I see you yawning over. That means you you lost faith in the Knicks, huh? No, I tell you, I still got the Knicks to come out of this series yeah. in seven games. I, I really believe that. And, and if not, I can understand because Atlanta is showing me a, a lot mm-hmm. of what I didn't think they had. And um, even you, you, Trey is showing me that he is that superstar that you can trust. Because although, he, like you said, he didn't have – he haven't really had one of those big – Great games all the way through. He might have had a half or whatever, and a couple of quarter, um, quarters and spurts and games where he he show who he really is. But this last game last night, the one against the Knicks, I tell you, he picked them apart. He opening them up. He picked them apart. I mean, as a point guard, not as a scorer, but as a point guard, not as a superstar, but as a point guard. He did a great job in getting the ball where it need to be where it need to go. He read their defense perfectly, mm. and I mean, the game is really coming to this young man. Slow it down, and, yeah, and don't get it twisted when I keep saying game uh, Knicks and seven because I'm a defensive guy, yeah. and I believe that the Knicks defense could possibly slow them down and they haven't done it yet well the Knicks are a great a good defensive team Tibbs is historically a great defensive coach that's his mm-hmm. MO but sometimes I feel like Tibbs has like the, the Vogel Frank Vogel effect he doesn't have a feel for the game right mm. he thinks too much let's go back to game one yeah Flay, Trey hits that big floater mm-hmm. to take the lead why'd that happen because Tibbs put Frank Nina, Nina Keeler, whatever his name. I'm sorry. I don't have a problem with that. No, no, he hasn't. He. I'm gonna tell you, you why. You can't do that to him. I'm gonna tell you, you why. Cannot, you cannot. You I'm put you. Bullock on. That's he's because Rose is a defensive liability, right? Frank. He gets a lot of flack for where Phil Jackson drafted him at. I, I, but but Frank Nilakina defensively, I don't care. And you know, I had a conversation. But he got to get minutes though, right? Right. No, nah, but I had a conversation with someone earlier in the season, and and don't have, it, it wasn't on air, it wasn't recorded. But I had a conversation. I can't remember who I had the conversation with, and I remember having a conversation with somebody who was saying that Tibbs is the type of coach that are bringing in a clutch game. Frank Nilakina in the game for defense purposes, and he gets the job done. The and then when I'm watching this, I'm thinking, oh, just Zach, because I like to be right. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, this is about to make what I just what I believe right to happen. And so, and it didn't happen because Trey showed us that he's greater than what you think he is. You just can't bring nobody off the bench that been sitting on the bench all game to come guard me. That's the issue. So I can understand that. But I still cannot go against that decision. Because Frank Nilakina is a great defensive player. But if he's that great, why didn't you have him in early to stop him? Because he makes too many other bad decisions. That's why. That he does. And he don't fit into a playoff rotation. I get it. But. If you want to bring him in, and I had said it earlier to I can't I can't believe I can't believe I can't believe who I said this to, but I was saying he's the type of coach that will bring Frank N- Nilakina in down the stretch to come in and make a defensive play and get the job done. And when I saw him bring him in, I never questioned it. Yeah. So I can't question it now because I can understand. I called it out before. It even happened or even thought about and thought that he was the type of coach that would make the move. So when he made that move, I'm not, there's no way I can talk bad against it. No, I dig it. I dig it. So yeah. going forward, the only thing, not the only thing, but 
go the Knicks can only hope or the fans can only hope that Randall finds his rhythm because I think I Tibbs, he will. Tibbs has showed his hand. It is Alec Burke had a great game one. No one expected that, right? You got that performance from him. Because he's been doing that all season. Yeah, he's not, nice. He's, not he's, at this. Not at he's this. He's a lottery pick. Yeah, he's been, but he's been, yeah. he's been balling for the Knicks. Mm. He was, had been hurt, but when he came back, now nah, them his, buckets he was hitting was crazy. That's how I've been watching him do that all season. See, you, on, on this stage, like that, I'm gonna give him not his on this stage, that was, that but was, I seen him win games for the Knicks this season. He was on the verge of not having to pay for any dinners in the minute. In, but in he New got York hurt. City. Yeah, he got hurt, and then he went out. But he was doing that before he got hurt. And then when he came back, it did take him long to, to step right back in and do that. And then the playoffs started, and we watching them do it in the playoffs. And I was – so it wasn't shocking to me mm-hmm. because I watched him do it during the season. Mm-hmm. Because to me, I always felt that he – and I'm not trying to start no controversy, but to me, Randall is playing okay. But to me, Randall is just a, a – a, it's a Robin. A, not a Robin. He's not even a Robin. He's a, he's a bench player. He comes off the bench and give you a spark. That's what he is. Julius Randle? Ju- not Julius Randle. I'm talking about, um, um, I'm sorry, not Julius Randle. R.J. Barrett. R.J. Yes, Barrett. Yeah, we agree with that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I believe that. You've been saying that for a minute. Yeah, too, I believe that. Yeah. To, to, to this, not, that's not a knock on him. It's just that he's Lou not. Lou Williams and paid how many. Exactly. He, to me, he could be one of those players that that, that six man off the Jamal bench. Jamal Crawford. We go exactly. down the list. The cool coaches of the world. We, yeah. yeah. That's, that's Barbosa's of the world. Like these are champions. That's R.J. Barrett to me. Yeah. He's not a super. He's not a superstar. He's not a star. He's not a starter to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Is he productive on the floor? Yes. He's not a starter. Not a starting shooting guard. Mm-hmm. He's not a starting forward, a small forward to me. No, I'm the Sox, yeah. So, I mean, come on. That's it. And that's the Eastern Conference all in a wrap. Yes, it is, man. And even with that being said, yeah. we done spoke here for almost probably a little over, what, 35, 36 minutes. Yeah. It's exciting, man. I'm watching every game. Yeah, listen. I don't care who it. I'm, from I'm the play-in to the playoffs, been exciting. Yeah. And I don't care what nobody talking about. People keep talking about, oh, oh, oh. These players today is soft. No, Listen, yeah. this has been a physical, this has been a physical playoff. Refs been kind of letting them play. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not all touchy touchy, you know, quick fouls and all that. They let them play a bit. Listen, I don't want to go off into a tangent, but like we we people compare it to 90s ball, right? Yeah. Was that that it was exciting, but seeing players get hacked going to the lane, that ain't no, great either. No, but 75, 80 <laughs> point games. No, nah, I don't want to see that. Come on, man. No, Dude, I don't want to see that. Almost getting hurt. I want to see what the talent you got. Yeah. Show me what you got. Let's move play within feet. the rules. Defense, move your feet. 